Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of Today's Bluff. I'm Corporal Donald Holbert, here with your week's news. Sleeves up. That's right, on Monday, March 9th, Marines will begin rolling sleeves again with the seasonal uniform change back to Desert Utilities. The Commandant of the Marine Corps released a letter February 25th informing Marines of the decision to revert back to rolling sleeves. In the letter, General Amos said that he would publish a MAR admin to announce the change and thank Marines for their leadership during some very challenging times. MAR admin 624-11 published back in October 2011, authorized the change to year-round sleeves down. The new MAR admin, 078-14, canceled the previous. The Department of Defense Education Activity coordinated and executed a simulated active shooter scenario at Middleton S. Elliott Elementary School March 4th. As the shooters moved through the school, Teachers practice their emergency protocols for seeking shelter and reporting the incident. Air station and local area first responders converged on Laurel Bay School and immediately began clearing the school of active threats and aiding the injured. The exercise allowed the school and local agencies to practice their interoperability. MCASB for personnel frequently train to ensure that they are ready for any threat. The Four Leathernecks Comedy Tour visited Fighter Town March 6th. On Thursday afternoon, Marines, sailors, and civilians from the Tri-Command area filled the Lassiter Theater aboard the air station for free food and to watch stand-up comedy and live music. This event is designed to be an opportunity for Marines and sailors to take a break from the rigors of their daily operational stress and to build unit camaraderie. This year's entertainment included comedians Rich Aronovich, Ronnie Jordan, Jim McHugh, and musical guest, The Farm. In honor of African American History Month, the Naval Hospital Beaufort hosted a luncheon on February 27th in the Naval Hospital Auditorium. The luncheon was free and open to all Tri-Command residents. During this event, the Tri-Command African American History Month Committee and other generous donators put together a program for the audience's enjoyment and education. The program consisted of participants singing, dancing, and stories of distinguished African American figures. On Monday, March 5th, Marine Aircraft Group 31 hosted an ethics brief for the MAG-31 senior leadership. Navy Captain Rick Rubel, an ethics professor at the United States Naval Academy, spoke to the leaders about character and ethical decision making. The brief was held in an effort to aid the MAG in building exceptional Marines that perform to the high ethical standards set by the Commandant and Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. Marine Wing Support Squadron 273 and Marine Air Control Squadron 2 Detachment A participated in a joint forward arming and refueling point exercise with the South Carolina National Guard last week. From February 24th through the 28th, Marines constructed helicopter landing zones and conducted assault landing zone operations aboard McIntyre Joint National Guard Base. By hosting the fighter town units, the FARP gave the soldiers at McIntyre the opportunity to trade information and practices. With more bases transitioning to the joint military status, exercises that bring together can benefit multiple branches of the military and can increase the cohesiveness during future operations or contingencies. On Friday, March 7th, Marine and civilian evaluators from the National Restaurant Association visited Mess Hall 2080 aboard MCAS Buford. The Chow Hall was undergoing its yearly inspection for the Major General W.P.T. Hill Awards Program. Established in 1985, the W.P.T. Hill Award was intended to improve food service operations and recognize the best messes in the Marine Corps. The awards are slated to be presented to representatives of each winning unit in May. That's all the news for this week. To stay up to date on all that is happening in the Tri-Command area, you can visit our official social media websites, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Don't forget to tune into the next edition of today's Bottom Line Upfront.